What's up everybody? This is Joe aka I am the dentist and I am bringing you the second installment of our series called The Anatomy of an Ace. For those of you that may be unfamiliar with Search and Destroy, an ace is when one player from one team kills the entire enemy team by himself. This video happens to be a little bit more special because it is a clutch ace and a clutch ace happens when you are the last person standing for your team and you are able to eliminate the entire enemy team by yourself to win the round for your team so real quick this is under MLG variant settings we the focus of our channel is the introductory elements of competitive gaming and the transition as we make our way from public room players to competitive gamers so just real quick on the MLG variant settings there is only 4v4 here's a minute and a half round timer there is a five second plant time and a seven and a half second diffuse time also, there are some things that are banned from, ML from the MLG variant rule settings. One is Flak Jacket, another is Warlord, and Second Chance is also banned. A few of the attachments, uh, underbarrel attachments such as grenade launchers and flamethrowers are banned, as well as Rapid Fire. So, with that being said, let's take a look at the breakdown of this map and see how this Clutch Ace came together. So, right off the bat, I'm going to move towards the B bomb site. As I move over here, I'm going to hide for a second so that I can avoid the pre nades, which my teammate actually gets hit with. So let's stop it after he gets hit and let's look at the spawn points. So there are two major spawn points, obviously, the, the only spawn points in Search and Destroy, you only get one life. Our spawn is going to be back on the street where you saw me spawn in. The enemy team spawn is going to be this green area over here, the Jeeps. And as you can see with the graphic, there are two bomb sites, A bomb, which is located near the generators, and B bomb, which is in the top office. So from each of these spawns, there are three routes that you can take that are the most popular, most commonly traveled. The first from our spawn is going to be to flank around through the A building towards A. The second is to go upstairs into the B office area. And the third is to use the back alleyway to flank around to the B bomb site. The enemy team on the other hand has three counters to this. They also have the advantage because they're going to get to these spots before your team does. The first route is to go to the towards the A bomb through the generators. This will prevent the offensive team from flanking your A bomb site. The next option is for a guy to go into the top B area. The third option is to counter the alleyway route from the offensive team. That guy usually sets up on the yellow dumpster behind there. Um, let's see where this team decides to go and the first play that I'm going to make here. So as I see my teammate get prenated there, I'm going to stun up into the top office as I expect a guy to be rushing there. He doesn't rush there, but he does rush the alleyway and I'm able to pick up the first kill. At this point, I'm expecting there not to be anyone back here, but I do see someone and I get a couple hit markers. Now I'm going to throw top office because I know I'm getting called out. At that point I do get hit with some shots and let's stop it right there. So as you can see on the map, here are our three deaths from our team. We have two guys get taken out over by flanking towards the A-bomb site. Our first guy got prenated with the overhead nade from the uh, defensive team spawn. So right now I just got hit and I really have no option. At this point I'm going to make a move, the only move that I have, and move to the alleyway. So I know that there's a guy there, he's probably waiting for me and as you can see he was laying prone and I'm able to pick him up with uh, sitting on that nice head glitch right there. And if you don't know a head glitch is when um, in in first-person shooter games, especially Call of Duty, the bullets come out of your forehead. So basically the enemy can only see the top of your head, but the bullets you're still able to shoot the, the enemy from that position. So let's stop it as I move here to this little cutout spot. At this point, I know that there are only two guys left. I've got two guys down. I'm, I know that I just got shot from behind by a guy over in the runoff area. Now, he's over in that area, and he has a couple of options himself. 
His first option is to move towards the statue and jump into the top B, B, dom air, uh, B bomb area through the window. Another option is for him to go straight up the stairs and wait for me to come to the B bomb site. The third option is for him to chase me down through the alleyway and begin to pressure me. Because when you're in a situation where it's 2v1, 3v1, 4v1, your objective is to pinch the last remaining guy that's left. You want to be close the map in, all move into an area together as you slowly cut off the map and get the kills. So the other enemy I'm expecting to be somewhere near the A-bomb site. Um, usually since two guys went down on my team over by A, I'm expecting that there are two guys over there because I just killed two guys on B. Most teams do that. They send two guys to B, two guys to A. So I'm going to expect him to come from the other direction. Now, his my options from this point are threefold as well. I can go back down the alleyway and try to engage the guy that may be coming from the field area. I can flank around behind this far building to my back and try to wait for the next guy to flank through. Or I can move into the bottom office area underneath the B bomb site and make sure that I am in an area to cover a few different spots and to cover my back. So let's move on to the gameplay and see where I go. So from here I'm going to wait a little bit, see if I can pick up any sound cues of anybody reloading or jumping and I'm gonna move here to the bottom of the office and I get stunned so I was correct on my assumption let's stop it and see here um, I was correct on my assumption that there was a guy on the a bomb site now he has picked me up and he has me stunned at this point he's calling me out to his teammate letting him know exactly where I'm at so at this point I only have a couple places that I can go I can go straight out the office door and rush at him, try to pick up that kill. Probably will get shot in the back if I go in that route. The next option is to go straight towards the B-bomb and maybe try to get a plant off since the, I know the guy has way more than five seconds to get flank around me and get the kill on me. Or I can move towards the last flanking option, his only route option, to get to me, which is to come up the back stairs. So as I push out through the stun, let's start the game back up. As I push out through the stun, I'm actually going to go towards the backside stairwell. At this point, I'm going to set up so that I can see two areas real quick here and see if I can catch anything. I don't see the guy coming through, and I know I only have 30 seconds left, and he walks right in front of me, and I'm able to get that kill. So as I get that kill right there, I have a choice. It's now a 1v1 situation. When it's down to a 1v1 situation, most players that are on defense are just going to hide. And they're going to wait for you to plant that bomb so that they know where you're at. And they're going to move in. Because at that point, you really have no options. You have to stay near the bomb. You have to be able to protect the bomb so that they don't defuse. So the defensive person can then use the bomb to his advantage to know where you're at and be able to come through and pick you up. So I have two options and at this point this is where you need to think ahead. You can either try to plant the A-bomb, which being only 22 seconds left I need to get there rather quickly, I have to have 5 seconds to plant. And what happens is when most people get a kill by a bomb site, for example I get a kill on this one on B, they're going to go to the other bomb site. Now that's a good strategy because when a guy gets killed he sees you show up on his radar as a red dot he knows where you're at he's going to come to that area and as I move towards if I move towards a I'm able to distance myself from him but he's also going to know that that's probably where I'm going to go so I'm going to use a trick here and try to just rush straight to the B bomb site and see if I can get a plan off and hopefully not get picked up from the enemy team so as I start back up here and move to the stop stairwell, you can see as I pick the last guy up that he was looking towards that A-bomb site to see if he could pick me up running middle of the map. I'm able to come through the top B area and pick him up with a pretty easy kill as he was not expecting me to be there. He was expecting me to go towards the A-bomb site. 
So that's it for this series. I want to thank the Heartbreak Nation TV for letting us post this on their channel. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope that the breakdowns were helpful and will kind of give you some insight on how to approach search and how to kind of think ahead a little bit and anticipate where the enemies might be coming from because it will improve your chances at succeeding at search. And that's all I got for you guys. Thanks for watching. Come uh, check out our channel. It's uh, Cod Anonymous. And you can hit us up on Twitter at I am the dentist or it's a at I underscore am underscore the dentist and also my partner in crime at Lloyd Milligan. Thanks for watching everybody and uh, hopefully you'll see some more of our videos soon.